Hi Ed, just got back. Um, tell us about the final leg of the ICOM Cup. Uh, didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> um, had a good start and, uh, and uh, early in the race it was all kind of seemed to be okay and uh, my uh, my kind of strategy wasn't quite right and uh, also I got my head down and boated a couple of issues on the boat itself and ended up spending time fixing that and not really focusing on the big picture and it became pretty apparent after the first leg of the race uh, the first uh, basically the first night that I was in a pretty bad situation I was a long way behind everyone else at that point you were well north but looking at your track yeah yeah I was uh, well I knew the northwest wind was going to come in and I kind of thought I'd hook over that way and get it when it did come in. It was I was so far north that I was overstood 10 miles, so I spent a lot of time reaching to get back down to the mark. So uh, yeah, it wasn't clever at all, really, but stupid actually. But. So that was a that was a conscious decision on your part, a, 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 one of your tactics. What about other tactics? Did they go well or? Well, to be honest, after that, there was the only tactic was just try and claw back some uh, claw back uh, some of the miles and. Yeah, it was really hard because uh, basically if you're at the back of the fleet it was uh, the weather pattern didn't really suit the back to catching up so every time we uh, we'd get near anyone we'd probably park up in a hole of no wind so it took uh, basically to the end of the race to even over overtake someone so but it's just kind of keeping going actually after the disappointment the first night it was kind of good to kind of have a little talk to myself and uh, the second day actually I sailed a lot better and I sailed pretty smart last night so at least made some ground. So if that was one of the lows, um, what other lows and highs were there for you? Um, well, with with the leg, uh, I don't know really. Uh, it wasn't a particularly enjoyable leg because didn't do very well. Uh, but saying that, you know, it's <clears throat> it's good just to get some time in, do a good forty-eight hour race, and that's you know, and I can do it even when it's going badly. So that's good. You seem uh, you seem very tired. How much sleep did you get? Uh, I got maybe 20 minutes on the first day and then literally 5-10 minutes if that uh, today. Uh, I was pretty aware that I had a lot of catching up to do. So um, uh, it was last night especially, I think there was a lot of ground to be made. If you could keep your head about you and not sleep when there's no wind, if you see what I mean. So this was your third um, solo Figaro race. Um, was it any easier than the first two? Um, yeah, I think the more you do, probably the more you get used to the whole how it all works, all the kind of specific Figaro uh, measurements and kind of specifics as well. Which I think the more you do that, just the more you become comfortable with it, which will help. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think yeah, it probably does get easier as well. I hope. Okay, thanks very much, Ed. I know you're going to go and get some grub and some sleep right now. Yeah, and, cheers. Uh, we'll speak again. Cheers.